where did the year go? It feels like just yesterday that we were sitting down chatting about what was in store for 2022. And here I am having quit my day job, gone on a couple trips, had some amazing doors open, and at the same time dropped the ball on all of my content creating goals. So in this video, I'm going to give you a proper update on the past six months. We're gonna talk income because I know y'all like talking numbers. And because I am in dire need of a reset, we're gonna be talking about how I'm setting my focus and just sort of resetting my brain for the rest of the year. As always, timestamps below. Goal check-in. Let's start off with income because for better or for worse, I know that that's what people wanna hear. For 2022, I set a financial goal of six figures, which is just over a 30K jump from last year. So far, I have about $43,000 on the books, which means in contracts, it's not all in my bank account yet, but that does have me trending to be better than last year, although slightly behind my goal of six figures. Breaking down those numbers a little bit further, 42,000 of that was made in brand deals, which were spread out over about 20 different partnerships, although several were repeat campaigns with the same brand. If you're somebody who wants to make content creating a full-time job, I definitely recommend trying to secure some long-term partnerships with brands that you've worked with in the past and already love. Now for what I consider side income, if you were doing the math, if I made about $43,000 or in 42 were brand deals, I made only about $1,000 in other income. Income. And for me, that's affiliate income and AdSense for my blog. That number is definitely not where I want it to be, but when looking at how much I drop the ball, it's understandable. And you know what? $1,000 is still $1,000. And as I've said before, it helps offset my hosting fees and the different subscriptions that I have. So I'm still grateful for it. Checking in on some of the rapid fire goals I had for this year. Mm. My goal for this year was 30 blog posts, so I should be at 15. I'm at seven total. For my Comfy Girl Curls YouTube channel, I should have about 12 and a half videos up by now. I have three. For this channel, where I was a little bit more consistent, I wanted to have 25 videos up by end of June. I have 16. What else do we have here? I wanted to pitch brands. I haven't done that. I wanted to build up and diversify my income streams. As I just shared, that was a little bit of a fail, but I do have an exciting update to share in a few moments. And I wanted to be more organized, which overall I would say is a bit of a fail. I am still using Notion, which is actually what I'm reading this off of, but it's slowly becoming a bit of a dumping ground in the sense that when I get an idea, I'm not taking the time to put it into the correct database or fully fill out the sections. So everything kind of feels a bit half complete, but yeah. So obviously I'm not where I want to be for July, 2022, but am I hung up about it? No, not at all. Let's talk about what's new and I think it will help explain my lack of consistency. First, obviously I have quit my day job. You are looking at a full-time content creator. And ironically, my transition into becoming a full-time content creator is what caused me to drop the ball with content creation. And I talk about this a little bit more in my personal mid-year update, but I started this year actually really strong. I was pumping out weekly videos on this channel. I was posting TikToks semi-regularly. And even though I wasn't doing all the things, I felt more in control. But around March, April, when I started to tie up the loose ends at my day job, I became so overwhelmed and busy that I didn't have time to film YouTube videos and edit them. Really the only thing I could stay on top of was my sponsored content because that had contractual deadlines. And I think for some of those, I still had to ask for an extension. And after I quit my day job, when you would think I would have a lot more time on my hands, would feel really free, I almost had this crash. I was incredibly exhausted and I also found that I had started comparing myself to other creators that were full-time as well. You know, the creators that had the super aesthetic day-in-the-life content, that were waking up early, drinking their green juice, and just making life as a full-time creator look so glamorous and they're being so productive and I was looking at myself like, why can I barely put on makeup and clothes in the morning. And all of that comparison actually got me feeling stuck in a sense. I had to really slow myself down and remind myself not to compare myself to others and recognize that I was going to go at my own pace. And I was also learning to work from home for the first time ever in my life. While a good percentage of the world had already spent years 
learning how to work from home. They all kind of got over that hump of not being particularly productive or knowing what to do with themselves or knowing how to time manage. Something else that I didn't account for, but I really should have, was how many influencer events I would be invited to. Or correction, how many that I would actually be able to attend. For the past couple of years, I've been getting some really cool influencer opportunities in my inbox. Whether that was workout classes, store launches, VIP experiences, but I was almost never able to attend any of them, mostly because the majority of them were smack in the middle of the work day of the work week. So a lot of these started coming through for late spring, early summer, and I said yes to everything, which also burnt me out and prevented me from working on blog stuff and YouTube. But at the same time, are experiences that I would not pass up. Because of them, I've already been able to make some new creator friends in Vancouver. And that's something I'm appreciating now more than ever because I no longer have coworkers that I can talk to and bother every moment of the day. And so my fellow content creators and influencers, in a sense, become my coworkers. Next, I wanna talk about Stan. As of April this year, I joined Stan for Creators as an ambassador, and that opportunity has kind of rocked my world. If you're not familiar with Stan for Creators, it is your all-in-one creator store. It's a platform for creators to host their digital downloads, host courses, consultation slots in their calendar, among other things. I get asked a lot if it's just another link in bio, but it is not. It is for creators who are actively monetizing their experience, their skill sets, their knowledge. Thanks to joining Stan, I was actually able to cross off one of my goals for this year, and that was to create a digital asset, which is a Pinterest starter guide, which includes a self audit worksheet for anybody looking to level up their Pinterest game. It's something that I've wanted to create for a really long time. And without a tool like Stan, I don't think I would have gotten around to it yet because look at how I dropped the ball with everything else this year. Stan has also given me an amazing sense of community. I flew to New York for their first in-person creator event. I have connected with and hung out with Vancouver creators. I have even hosted my own Stan sponsored get together. And I went to their second creator event, Collab Fest in LA. And with each get together, I truly feel like I am deepening my connection to community. An incredibly valuable community too, because the people who are using Stan to its fullest are some social media powerhouses. Sometimes I'm seriously like, how do I fit in here? I don't know. Now let's talk about a career highlight that just happened and I'm still recovering from. VidCon US 2022. I had the absolute honor of speaking with Google for Creators once again, this time at VidCon US. Not only was it so special from a personal perspective to connect with old friends, the crew that we went to VidCon Abu Dhabi with, but it was just such a validating and empowering experience as a creator. This experience also opened up some really cool connections and it sounds like I'm going to be doing another speaking engagement fall of this year. So. Stay tuned. Overall, I just learned so much from VidCon and I'm gonna be summing up all of those lessons and learnings and I'll link it up here when it's live. Ooh, the light is shifting out here. One thing with working with natural light keeps moving. The last sort of update from the last six months is that I launched a brand new WordPress blog creatingwithkea.com. And it's where I'm gonna be consolidating all of my content creation and influencing tips. I'm really excited about this one too from a passive income perspective because I only have six blog posts up and it's making like a third of my Comfy Girl Curls income where I have like a hundred blog posts. So best believe I'm going to be spending some time building that out. So I hope you understand now why consistency just was not a thing the past six months and also why I'm not that bothered by it, but it's also why I really need to reset. I took some time to just sit down and make a list. I did a pencil to paper list, just a total brain dump. Even though I am a very messy and disorganized person, I don't like it. That's just how I am. But I do get really stressed when things are cluttered and messy and I feel like I don't have control. And right now I feel like I'm at the point where I don't have control of anything. <laughs> if I wanted to grab my camera gear, I had to sort through all of the cords and mess there. If I wanna pull up a photo, it will take me a while to scroll through everything on my phone. If I wanna find something on a hard drive or a memory card, 
better dedicate the day to it because I have no idea what is anywhere. So my to-do list for this sort of reset to really be able to take on the next six months is first reorganizing all of my gear which I actually took some time to do. The next is going to be organizing my phone because there is so much content on my phone that I'm out of storage. And that's a problem when your entire livelihood is in your phone. I also really wanna clean up my Notion boards so that they're more usable and less of a dumping ground. And a huge one is going to be sorting out my financials. I'm really grateful that I've passed the torch of sending invoices to Darren because for some reason that was just stressing me out. But to be able to do so effectively, I need to clean up my databases, I need to have all my contracts well organized and contact information so that when it's time for him to invoice, he can do it really quickly and efficiently. And once I am done resetting, I I am going to try to get back to all of my original goals for this year, while at the same time not applying so much pressure that I feel burnt out. I have to keep reminding myself over and over again that the reason that being a full-time creator or being self-employed is a goal for so many, and the reason why it was a goal for me was to have more freedom and to have less stress. So I'm not gonna beat myself up over not achieving specific goals as long as I know I am steadily working towards them. I am really looking forward to getting back to weekly content on this channel though. I think we'll hold off on another life update until January of 2023, but I'll catch you next week with another tip video. Until next time.